Hi friends, my name is Rosie and I'm doing a low buy slash no buy year. Let's talk about it. One of the things that sucked for me about 2023 is that I feel like I just lost all financial control I had. Um, I unfortunately am a compulsive spender. Uh, it is a coping mechanism I have and has not helped me in the least. I like nice things. I'm a Taurus. I like luxury. However, I do just have like a normal person salary and I have debt. And so that debt just compounds and keeps building. And in 2023, all of the interest started hitting my credit cards. And that was scary. <laughs> I cried and it felt like I was dug into this deep, unfixable hole. So I decided to look into no buy year. I had a video recommended to me on my homepage by Grace Nevitt. I will link it down below. And she in turn also recommended a video by Cynthia Dubois, I think. It's either Dubois or Dubois, I don't know. I will link hers down below as well. And they explained their general idea of a no buy year along with their rules that they were following. Um, looking at this, I was like, this is probably what I need. This might be able to help get me out of my hole. We moved for the third time in two years. Oh, and that really just sent us over the edge, I'd say, before I was like barely balancing it. Um, I also had two surprise trips to New York this year because of two deaths in the family. And I just overall had a very emotional year. So there was a lot of emotional spending as well. I personally am ashamed of that and it feels really bad to say but also if people don't say it then other people don't know that they're not alone and so that's what i'm trying to do here i'm putting myself on blast embarrassingly so hopefully there are other people feeling the same exact way we can talk about it and figure it out because god it feels really lonely it feels bad after watching those videos i decided i needed to commit to this and in between that time and now, unfortunately the month of December was really bad. Like waking up with my bank account in overdraft every day for a week bad. Um, and I felt hopeless. I was like, there's just nothing I can do. I can't fix this. So I took out a personal loan. I took out a personal loan of $12,000 this will cover the majority, like 90% of my credit card debt. And from that, I need to pay back a singular payment over the next three years. This is terrifying. I've heard nothing but bad things about personal loans, but I genuinely felt backed into a corner and like this was the only option I had. Um, and so I, this is not a typical cir circumstance, but I'm waiting on some money to come in from my grandfather's will. And as soon as that comes in, I'm paying off that personal loan. But in the meantime, the whole point is once I've paid off these credit card debts with the personal loan, I cannot rack up more debt on the credit cards. Otherwise it's over. Like I'm wrecked. So that's, that's my main motivation here is I'm really at a make or break point in my personal finances. If this doesn't work out, I'm just gonna be like selling my stuff and moving home. And that's not what I want to do. Um, I make certainly enough to live a normal life if I just get this debt under control. And so a no buy slash low buy year is meant to help you detach yourself from your spending, look at it in a real analytical way, figure out materially what you have a lot of, what you don't need more of, what you do need consistently to buy and what each thing is worth to you, you know? So it really is meant to help you value what you have right now more and put in the effort to be very mindful with your spending. And I need to be mindful with my spending. In conjunction with this, I've spoken about it in other videos, but I'm currently working through a binge eating disorder. <laughs> and you're probably like, Rosie, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? The healing process for binge eating disorder is to let go of all restrictive thinking around food specifically, but in general, they want it to be everything. A no buy year very specifically contradicts that. I am restricting. And so in order to be successful in my healing with my eating and my healing with my spending, 
I'm going in two very different routes and I feel like it's gonna probably mess me up a little bit in the head at some point. Um, so I'm trying to document the journey and like figure out what works and what doesn't. And because my two, those are my two coping mechanisms. It's eating and it's spending. They are inextricably linked. And to go about getting rid of either of them in very different ways is going to be very confusing for my brain, but both need to be done. And you know, two things can be true. Like a restrictive, a restrictive mindset for money right now is good for me, but a restrictive mindset for food is not. And so it's gonna be working on balancing those dualities and like making sure my brain doesn't explode in the meantime. Um, but those are the struggles I'm working with here. Uh, currently, I have used the loan to pay four out of my six credit cards. Um, so that's good. I saved some of it. So that way I wasn't just doing one fell swoop and fucking my credit score. So I'm trying to be smart about it, as smart as I can based on the research I've done and looking into like how the interest is gonna get you and all that type of stuff. But all of this to say, a no buy year, a full year is just unreasonable for me. I know myself, I know it's not possible. And I know that in response to restriction, immediately I will binge. I'm following the strict no buy rules until my birthday. My birthday is May 7th, so that's five whole months of following these lists. I have prepared for myself of what I can buy, what I can't buy, and what I really need to think hard about buying. After that, I'm going to be going on a low buy year in which I will set different rules for myself. I'll make another video explaining those rules because I haven't thought of them yet. We have to see how I react to this first five months and following those. It's still gonna be like very strictly budgeted. However, I'm not gonna like deprive myself of things that give me joy. And so, for the first five months, I have a green light list, a yellow light list, and a red light list. And so red light, obviously, I can't buy. Yellow light are things I really shouldn't have to buy, and if they do come up, I have to think about whether or not I really do need to buy them first before automatically doing it. And then green light are things that you just like need to survive, so that is okay. Or other things I'm allowing myself to buy in this period. So, I have a million notebooks, man. These are all filled with different things. And I should probably try to, I don't know, combine them. But I kind of like having different notebooks for different things. It just, I don't, it's fun. I have my little list written out here of my different lists, lol. I have my list of lists. Yes, I do. Okay, we are gonna start off with our green light list. So these are things I am allowed to buy. Number one, groceries. However, I would like to keep it at $150 a week. The way we're going right now is it's about $200 for groceries a week. And a lot of the times it's because I will get everything I need, but then I will see a fun little treat or five and grab them. And so this, at least, if I'm following this, I think that will also help tie into the healing of the binge eating disorder in which I will just not be purchasing the things that I typically binge on and that will save me money as well as not give me the opportunity to binge on them. I, I plan on allowing myself one or two sweet treats per grocery trip. Next, bills, obviously. We have Wi-Fi, rent, utilities, car insurance, and subscriptions, which are just Patreon. And that comes out to, I think that's about $30 a month for Patreon. All other like streaming services, oh, as well as Spotify Premium, which is $10 a month. All other streaming services, I'm using someone else's, but I don't have to worry about that. Car expenses. Along with the insurance, we need, I know I need um, an oil change, like now. Um, I need to get gas. And if any fixes come along in which I need to fix my car, I will be doing that. Iggy expenses. Igman, I'm not, he is not a part of this, you know. Uh, obviously, he lives his own little life in his own little world and I finance it and I love him and I'm not going to restrict my spending around him. Except for like new toys, because I have like a box full of a million of them. So he doesn't really need them. If he happens to go through all of them, fine. But I kind of doubt he will. And then finally, a new laptop and Final Cut Pro. This one, obviously, is a very large expense. My caveat with this one is, this is my first year in which I'll be getting a bonus from work. And since I have done the loan and essentially paid off, like front-ended the payment of my debt, um, 
I was originally going to use my bonus towards just clearing that. But now that that's done and I have to make the payments anyway and I already like have allotted my inheritance to go towards the loan, the bonus money I'm gonna get, I am allowing myself to purchase a new laptop with because mine is dying. She's just in a bad mood. She hates it. I can't save any more than one video on her at a time because she's just old. She's not even that old. She's like four or five years old, but she's got college papers on it. She's got grad school papers on her. She's got Civ 6 on her, which I tried to get rid of, but it won't completely go away. And she's got, you know, iMovie working 24 seven. Anyways, it's just really slow. And I would love to upgrade her in this year. And using my bonus money as that seems to be like a really good use of it. And that will help me here as well. Because one of my resolutions, just sort of like loosely, is to get better at YouTube and stuff and like editing and having more fun with it. Um, I don't know if I even wrote that one down, but that's just something I have in my head. And so that will obviously contribute. So that is my green light list. It's decently small. It's not crazy. We'll move on to the yellow light list. So this is everything, that, like replacements of stuff that I have. This is like gifts for other people. This is stuff that like you need to think about and you have to set a budget for yourself for, but occasionally it will be okay to buy. So first row is like bathroom stuff, like shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste. This is going to be a one in one out rule. So I want, I can only buy a new one once I've finished it. And it has to be like completely empty uh, or like I have one wash left, you know? So that way I'm not like hoarding stuff and waiting to use it because I have done that in the past. And you know, but these are things you need to care for yourself. Next, gifts on birthday, Valentine's day and our anniversary. I already have Kenan's va Valentine's day gifts purchased. So done. I don't know why I put anniversary in there. Our anniversary is in November, but that'll be low by year. We'll cover that then. And then birthday. As far as I can tell right now, I have four people I need to buy birthday presents for over the course of this. So that will be when I come up with a budget, see how we're looking financially and what I can afford. Travel. I have to travel for work. I have to travel for two weddings this year and two bachelorette parties. Um, I am not planning on personally like going anywhere like crazy as badly as I always want to leave the country. I am not planning on leaving the country in 2024 unless it's to go to Canada. Canada is easy, but I need to save my money. And when it comes to travel, most of the time my work will pay for it. But otherwise for the, you know, the weddings and the bachelorette parties, I will allow myself to purchase things for that, but only like the tickets, the stays, the food and any like activities that need to be done. I'm not going shopping. I'm not, unless, I will say for the bachelorette parties, there is like one or two nights that are theme nights. And for that, I will assess and decide what I need to purchase, but I'm not going like full new wardrobe for my trip to Norway. Get, you understand. Next, replacements of major things. Now this is like, I would need to think about it if something were to break. Our TV just broke, like right before we moved. So I had to buy another TV. So I'm. It's like situations like that in which I waited like a week or two and then we purchased a new one. Um, but you know, like if the walking pack were to break, I would have to think about it. I would have to research it and I would have to put a budget for myself and then I could buy a new one. But the point is I can, I can do replacements if I deem them necessary. Otherwise, if they're just excessive things, like if I have makeup that I use up, but it's, I've had it for a while and I didn't really love it, I'm not gonna get another one replacements of like my base makeup, like the stuff I use constantly. So that would be concealer, like my very basic products, just like no new fun powders, no new palettes, nothing, nothing crazy that like I don't need uh, in to do a regular normal makeup look. Yellow light on home, thrifted home decor, and then just furniture. I know what I want. For this room, I want a very specific chair that is new. And then I want at least two console tables, one for our room, one for downstairs. I want a bar, but like a cabinet, not a real bar, you know, just like a little cabinet to put alcohol on. And I want a chair for downstairs, like a big extra comfy chair. Those are the only things I'm looking for this year. And my goal is to thrift them um, besides the new chair here. Uh, this like otherwise, I am looking at very cheap options 
on Facebook Marketplace. That kind of counts as thrifting. Um, or like Walmart.com. That's where we got our table and chairs. We didn't get the table there. We got the chairs there. But stuff to finish out the home. However, I'm not trying to like get a new mattress just because we paid off our mattress credit card and we can. Or, you know, brand new desk just because I'm bored with it. No. I am looking for the cheapest possible option to get these these final furniture pieces in here. And that's that. Finally, going out to eat. We, as a household, go out to eat like twice a week on the weekends for breakfast. Kenan orders food constantly, but that's none of my business. I order food sometimes, certainly not as frequently as I used to, but I wanna stop that entirely. I'm going to be deleting my DoorDash app again. Um, going out to eat at most two times a week and I have to factor in like seeing friends. So I'm going to count that towards like seeing friends and going to do stuff is my twice a week going out. Otherwise, I really wanna see people but have them here more or you know, like go to homes more, just like really chill, not crazy activities. And finally, we have a red light. This list includes new clothes, shoes, or accessories. The only caveat to that is a bridesmaid dress and shoes if, you know, they want specific ones. Otherwise, I'm not going shopping for the next five months. It's just not gonna happen. I can thrift occasionally for funsies, but I normally don't even find that much thrifting anyway. So this is very specifically, I'm not going online and ordering new things. I don't need more clothes. I need to get rid of some clothes, quite honestly. And it's just, they're not necessary. I definitely don't need more shoes. Accessories, I sometimes wear, but barely. New makeup, nail polish, etc. As I explained, I'm not getting anything brand new that I've never tried. I will only be replacing things I know I use. Brand new home decor. As much as it will pain me to see those cutie little Target Valentine's Day birds, I cannot purchase them. I can't do it. I'm gonna, I might ask Kenan for one or two because Iggy destroyed my Christmas ones, but I'm not gonna get just little tchotchke stuff. I've already have, I have enough tchotchkes, I'm good. Physical books. This will play into my reading goal of 2024, but I'm trying to read through all my physical books here. And so I do not need to buy more physical books. My only exclusions to that are book of the month. And that is because it's book of the month and I have the credits that I got as a gift. So that's, I'm, I'm gonna get the books. Uh, but along with that, I'm also gonna try to be more mindful about book of the month because every month I've just been like, yes, 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 I'll take a book. Even if I, like I haven't read most of them. Um, so I'm trying very hard to only get a book if I'm excited about the book. And you know, not feel bad about skipping a month because I have plenty to read right here. Along with that, I am allowed to read books from Kindle Unlimited. I have Libby, the library app. I have all of my physical books here. And then if I really, really, really want a new book that is like a sequel to a story that I am currently reading, I am allowed to look for it on the Kindle app where it is cheaper if I can't find it on Libby. And then finally, delivery food, which I told you. So. I'm just trying not to deliver any food whatsoever. So those are my lists. Um, they could have been much more extensive, quite honestly. One of the things they recommend doing is taking stock of everything you own. I, however, just don't have time to do that. I have too much stuff. I don't have time to do that. Um, I went through a very strong minimalism phase in college and then regretted it because I, at heart, am a maximalist, if you cannot tell. Uh, however, a maximalist does not necessarily need to have a ton of things she doesn't use. A maximalist just means she goes crazy with the things she does use. So I'm going to do my best to just declutter and like clean out my life and really give my fresh new space a time to be fresh and new, not filled with all my old shit that I don't use. When we were moving and it took six hours to move all of our stuff, I was like, why do we have so much stuff? why we don't need like we don't need all this stuff so we're not moving this year which is a thrill hopefully knock on wood god forbid and with that i think i'll be able to really settle into a space see how much i use my things what is like worth its purpose to me here and what i can get rid of so that wraps up our fun little no buy low buy year rule set this is what my 2024 is gonna look like. 
I'm going to try really hard to do a check-in every month during my monthly reset of how accountable I'm being. Just, I'm gonna share this with Kenan. He's gonna know. I just really need to take it seriously this time. And I feel like I'm in a mature enough headspace. And also, like I said, my financial security is like on the line. I, I work best under deadlines that are scary, quite honestly. So I have faith in myself that this will be the time I can turn it around. And I will share that journey with you in case you two are a fellow shopaholic girly deep in debt and scared about it because it has to be possible to get out. I've watched so many like budget mama videos on how to get out. It is possible and I will be freaking doing it in 2024. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe to go on this journey with me. Possibly, you know, completely get rid of my debt. That would be pretty epic. If you are going on a similar journey or you've done this before, please leave a comment because I want to know any tips you have or if you've tried it and how it went. Um, because I'm looking for other experiences. Obviously, I've watched those two videos along with a couple other random ones um, just to see what people were and weren't buying. But I like to hear from people about it and see how hard or how easy it was for them. So yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a fabulous whatever time of day you're in and I will be talking to you very soon. Bye.